السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته كيف أمسيتم How are you this evening أمسينا وأمسى الملك لله والحمد لله لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير رب أسألك خير ما في هذه الليلة وخير ما بعدها رب أعوذ بك من شر ما في هذه الليلة ومن شر ما بعدها رب أعوذ بك من الكسل والسوء الكبر رب أعوذ بك من عذاب في النار ومن عذاب في القبر آمين بسم الله الواحد الأحد الفرد الصمد الذي لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد والحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه دائما أبدا صرمدا ما دامت السماوات والأرض ومن بعد أن تزولا حمدا يليق بجلال وجهه وعظيم سلطانه وجزيل نعمائه ويليق بجماله وجلاله وكماله والصلاة والسلام على أشرف أنبيائه محمد الطيب الطاهر الأمين الصادق الرسول المبين المبعوث رحمة للعالمين وعلى آله الطاهرين الطيبين صلاة طيبة مباركة ساكية نامية دائمة بدوام الله باقية ببقاء الله لا تنقطع أبدا ولا تفنى صرمدا صلاة ترضيه عز وجل وترضي صلاة ترضيه عز وجل وترضي رسولنا صلى الله عليه وسلم ويرضى بها عنا مولانا سبحانه وتعالى آمين يا رب العالمين إن شاء الله just a short class or reminder as we do these sessions they are not just a khatira but it's just like half hour sort of khatira um, in which it is actually sort of mini class a small class in which I share with you some aspects important aspects of Islam and uh, mostly uh, on spiritual aspects of Islam and we will have other times when we also speak of some rational and intellectual aspects of Islam with the um, intent that we will always inshallah ta'ala balance our lives balance between the intellectual or the rational and the spiritual as well so this will be inshallah ta'ala our, our aim and our way of life so that's the way I uh, seek to live and that's the balance that Islam seeks to establish the balance between our intellectual nature and our spiritual nature, not only our physical nature as well, inshallah ta'ala. So in that context of what I recite in Salah also has to do with that. I recite that which conveys a message that is consistent with the objectives and aims that we have inshallah ta'ala for change in our lives, basically to prepare ourselves, me and you, ultimately for what? For that moment when we leave this dunya, that we leave it and our hearts are fully committed to Allah Azza wa Jal. That our hearts are fully in love of Allah Azza wa Jal. That our hearts are in full desire of Allah Azza wa Jal. That we do not go to the bed of death or if we die by accident while our minds or hearts and thoughts are preoccupied by something other than what Allah loves. And I think if you ponder it well, you would know that none of us would want to die that way. That's not the way to go. And therefore we want to adjust our lives so that naturally or statistically, by the time our ajal comes, that we are in that same condition of awareness of Allah Azza wa as we struggle to be in awareness of Allah Azza wa all the time. My way and yours, as I mentioned last time, is a way to Allah Azza wa We are created in this life to walk back to Allah Azza wa to go back to Jannah where we originated. And we want to prepare ourselves. It's a journey 
Allah says, remember in the Quran, that those who shall ultimately be in the divine company and be safe are those who come to Allah. So there's coming to Allah. This journey of dunya is a going to Allah. Who come to Allah, but it is not a geographic, topological, um, geographic coming, spatial coming. It is heart coming. إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ that my qalb is to keep changing and changing its phases and improving and changing and improving spiritually in my consciousness of Allah Azza until I meet Allah Azza wa I arrive with a certain condition of my heart and that's what counts. What is that condition of my heart when I'm going to leave this dunya ultimately? Whether my occupation was a blue collar worker or white collar worker rich or poor, man or woman, young or old, under all circumstances. What counts is the condition of my heart at the moment I leave this dunya. What happened to me in this dunya in preparing myself, in preparing my heart to finally meet Allah, hopefully, in a state that is qalbun salim. وَلَا تُخْزِنِي يَوْمَ يُبْعَثُونَ يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ Except the one who comes to Allah with a qalb that is salim. If we are smart, really smart, and if you are spiritually smart, there's intellectually smart and there is spiritually smart. Sometimes some of us have a high IQ, but a very low SQ. High IQ, but very low SQ. SQ is my invention, spiritual quotient. And you can, you can have high IQ, but very low spiritual IQ. What counts most is your spiritual quotient, not your intellectual one. Your intellectual one enables you to solve problems, engineering problems, math problems, house problems, administrative problems, all that is beneficial and good. But that does not help much, as much as your spiritual quotient. What was in your heart about the awareness of Allah Azzawajal? What was the state of one's um, uh, spiritual softness in your qalb? Spiritual constant awareness of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. How much attachment emotionally I had in my qalb. How many choices in my life did I make on the basis of that spiritual, emotional attachment to Allah Azza wa How much of that? Uh, all of us are to account for that, whether we are Nobel Prize winners or are you know, garbage collectors. That's what counts. The quality of our hearts when we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so it is in this context that we do what we do, that I remind myself and strive, as I hope you would be striving as well, to hopefully, inshallah ta'ala, when we leave this dunya, leave this dunya in a state of mahabba for Allah Azza wa in a state of longing and true, honest desire for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we would have lived this life in a balanced way. We were not extreme people in embracing the rational, materialistic philosophies of life, where that we were not like that, that the rational and the intellectual and the materialistic was properly, properly adjusted and balanced and contained in the, in the, in the envelope of spiritual awareness of Allah Azza wa And that's what counts. We say if a person dies with shahada, they will enter Jannah. Well, well, many of us sometimes don't think about this profoundly. Assalamu alaikum. How are you today? Alhamdulillah, good to see you again. Sure, yes. Yeah. Inshallah. Okay. Just as I go on, if you don't understand something, go so just let me know. Have fun. Thank you. You're very welcome. Uh, so, as I said, when we are going to die, and we die, if a person says, La ilaha illallah, enters Jannah, what does that mean? If I know La ilaha illallah mentally only, you know, anybody can memorize it. Well, I memorize it, and then I'm going to die. Okay, I'm going to say, La ilaha illallah, so I enter Jannah. SubhanAllah, something very important there. Did ever that La ilaha illallah enter my heart? Did it mix 
with the inner recesses of my heart. Because some of us know at some level that when we are dying, sakaratul maut, the intoxicating moments of dying are beyond anybody can understand and imagine. Imagine this. Have you ever been so tired and did not sleep for two or three days? So tired. Did anybody go through that? I did. So, so tired. Sleepless nights. And very tired. To the extent has it arrived to you that you can't move your lips to say a word. Have you felt ever something like that? To the extent that you cannot think at all. So tired. You can't move your lips. You can't think at all. Sakaratul mok, mok, the incapacitating moments or the intoxicating moments of dying are even beyond that. In other words, what I knew mentally and intellectually at that moment is the state of the heart that counts. If something was in my qalb, it comes naturally. Now it's not about thinking and weighing and remembering. It's gone. Completely incapacitated. At that moment, what is uttered and what speaks and what moves is your heart. So if la ilaha illallah never was part of my heart, deeply, at that moment, it shall not be there. Regardless of who is around me, regardless of how much I have learned, if it is not in my qalb. Subhanallah. And so we must emphasize this. We live in times now, now and started a while ago, times in an age that is very materialistic. Very materialistic. And we have learned to find it, many of us, very normal to be very materialistic and only intellectualist. I say list like an ism, not intellectual even, intellectualist. And we forgot and we gave up the dimension of our qulub. You find some of us very rationally able, but very crude, very rude, very unkind, very selfish, very arrogant, very deluded, very impatient, very unmerciful, very unkind very restless and agitated. And that's some of us are big IQs. But again, very low SQ or MQ. Other MQ. What is MQ? You should know in the context when we're talking about. What do you think MQ is? Okay, close. What? What is it? No, no, that's, 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 in, that's part of IQ. Moral quotient. <laughs> Morality quotient. So we need our akhlaq to change. And our akhlaq are what we are inside, emotionally. The image inside of me is my khuluq. I know you hear the word akhlaq and it is translated to you and you know it as, as what? Manners. No, actually, it doesn't convey the reality of it. Khuluq is what we are inside, our inner image. Our inner image. The characteristics of you and and myself inside of us. Beautiful or ugly. That is patient or impatient. Calm or restless. Generous or greedy. Arrogant or humble. And so on. The character of the qalb is called khuluq. And what we look outside, the way we look outside is khalq, just a, just a vowel of change, the same letters, kha, kha, lam, qaf, but one is khalq, the other one is khuluq, khuluq. And the khuluq is the way we are inside. And that's what we need to improve, that's the way to Allah. Our hearts must change the change that if it is positive, when we arrive, arriving meaning my qalb has developed and changed so positively morally that now it is nearest to Allah in terms of rahma, in terms of adl, in terms of ihsan, in terms of rifq, 
in terms of all the beautiful attributes of Allah, the human being seeks to have beautiful attributes, lack of Allah Azza wa Jal, but at a human temporal level. Allah is Rahim, we want to be Rahim. Allah is Adl, we want to be Adl, just. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Rafiq, kind, we want to be Rufaqa, kind. Allah is Halim, forbearing, we want to be Halim at our level. And that's how we progress towards Allah Azza wa Jal. Until either our heart is in a condition that is farther remote, far remote from beautiful divine attributes or very close to divine attributes. And then we are arrived. يقولون وصل هذا وصل هذا واصل This person has arrived. Essentially, that's what it means. And so we remind ourselves, we will continue inshallah ta'ala, always, please remember that as long as I'm living and I'm here with my dear brothers and sisters, I learn as I learn, remember that what I shall convey to you, first of all, I mean myself first. Ya'alamullah, I mean myself first. I'm speaking to me through you aloud. And that everything I shall share with you, even if I'm not explicit about it, this is the background of it. Always. All the time. Inshallah. So, of what we recited today from Surah Al-Ahzab, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, after saying a few things about his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam, he says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, udhukuru allaha dhikran kathira, wa sabbihuhu bukratan wa asila. A means by which to connect to Allah. A means by which to polish our hearts, to change our hearts. Allah assigned that. Is the doctor the ultimate doctor of the hearts and of the human beings? And he says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, he wants our hearts to be polished, to be refined, so that we get to him with a qalb that is salim and of the means he assigned for us to achieve that is Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu dhukuru allaha dhikran kathira O you have attained faith be in dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal very frequently a lot O dhukuru allaha dhikran kathira a lot Tilawatul Qur'an is dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal Salah is dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal and la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, wa la hawla wa la quwata illa billah, and so on, is the dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal, highly recommended. Salatu ala al-Nabi is the dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal. I told you, I think, before, that also of the most, of the most important um, ways of the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to obey Allah Azza wa Jal when we are faced with a challenge that calls for disobeying him, Azzawaj. And I remember him, and I stop myself from entering into the act of disobedience. That's a very powerful way of dhikr of Allah, Azzawaj. ذَكَرْتُ اللَّهَ فَتَذَكَّرْتُ فَلَمْ أَصِلْ لَهَا سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَلَى فَأَحْجَمْتُ عَنِ الْمَعْصِيَةِ I was going to, about to disobey Allah, I remembered Allah, I remembered the command, so I withheld from disobedience of Allah Azza wa on the basis of that awareness and that remembrance. That's a great dhikr of Allah Azza wa Please remember that. Versus if I am in dhikr of Allah Azza wa with my tongue, which is khair, but my tongue is in dhikr, but my mind or my heart are not in dhikr, so I'm in dhikr with my tongue, for example, but I still lie at the same time. I'm still in the mentioning Rick, but I'm thinking of how to conspire against this and that one and how to get this and that way and, and you know, to do this thing haram and that thing makruh. I could be in Vic with my tongue, but backbiting and cheating. Do you think, I, I, I you know, propose it to you, do you think that that's really Vic? 
Which one is better? The first one who did not move his tongue, but his heart was moved to obey Allah by remembrance, and his tongue did move and obeyed Allah, or the second one? The first one, obviously, isn't it? Subhanallah. And that's very normal, very natural, very logical, and very shari'i indeed. So, Allah, dhikran kathira, the ulama say dhikran kathira, most importantly with your heart. That we are aware of Allah with our hearts, with our emotions, with our feelings as well. That some ulama said, like the great uh, tabi'i scholar Mujahid, Imam Mujahid, he said, كَثْرَةُ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ أَن تَذْكُرَهُ فَلَا تَنْسَى That you are in awareness and remembrance of him and you never forget him. Never. That's dhikran kathira. Because Allah put the adjective kathira next to it. That we remember him as zawjil, we are aware of him as zawjil and we never forget him. That's dhikran kathira. Imagine that. So that's certainly a condition and a state to aspire to. We want to be that way. With my qalb, with my tongue, and with my limbs and senses, I should be in dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal. My qalb is in dhikr. My senses are in dhikr. That is, in awareness of Allah and in obedience of Allah Azza wa Jal. And my tongue is in dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal. I think most of us know the concept of dhikr of the tongue, which is good. But we must, alhamdulillah, remember that the essence is to get our hearts to be in dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal. And if the hearts are in dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal, that's what is really reformative. That's what changes us. And to get to that point, two ways. We make ourselves and we struggle for to be aware of Allah internally. Like you do too many other things. We want to be aware internally. And you want to disengage from everything else but that awareness inside of you. So you struggle. There are thoughts that come and entertain you, but you ignore them and you keep focusing on that feeling inside of you. That's one thing, one way, but that's also difficult. But that's very useful, very instrumental. Or And also use your tongue through dhikr constantly, constantly until it gets to your heart. And sometimes there are some um, ways of dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal to do that intensely through tongue with the presence of a, of a, of a special teacher with the intent of that so that the dhikr will reach my qalb. So that after that I become, I am walking but my qalb is in dhikr. My tongue is not moving at all, but my qalb keeps La ilaha illallah inside and Allah, 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 La ilaha illallah and an awareness of Allah Azza wa Jal which makes the person sometimes, alhamdulillah, by the grace of Allah as maybe one time used to, one used to love to do something wrong. When the dhikr is in the qalb, you hate to do something wrong. Naturally. Your qalb naturally is like that. By practicing that. As it is said, practice makes perfect, right? So we struggle. Udhkurullah dhikran kathira. Sayyiduna Abdullah ibn Abbas, you know him, right? The great companion. Hebrew al-Ummah, the scholar of the Ummah of Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the scribe. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. He said, and I paraphrase the meaning, is that, subhanallah, no obligation has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered in which or about which he did not set a limit. Every obligation he spoke to us about, he set to it a limit, number one. Hadda hududan, thaniyan, second. And he subhanahu wa ta'ala provided concessions for those who are unable to perform it. Except a person who lost his mind, who is not even held responsible. He said, except the dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah commanded us to be in the dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal, but did not set a limit to how much we do it. Unlimited. 
لذكر الله سبحانه وتعالى نهاية ينتهي إليها أو حدا معلوما ينتهي إليه It became ذكر is the more the better unbounded and no limit in terms of space and no limit in terms of time either You do it while in the sea on land in the air whether you're sick or healthy whether you're you're um, in menstruation woman or not whether you're in janaba or not in dhikr of allah azawajal whether in fear or in security night or day privacy or public open no limit dhikr of allah azawajal and he did not give subhanahu wa ta'ala any concession to anyone not to be in dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal. Because you may be in dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal under all sort of conditions, sick or not sick, if you can't talk with your heart. With your heart, be in dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal. And it is recommended that it be very frequent to the extent that he subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that those who are not in frequent dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal, only sometimes in dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal, actually very dangerously we notice that that he says is the characteristic of a munafiq a latif those of us in other words who are only rarely in dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal, we are like a munafiq imagine that who said that not I. Allah Azza wa Jal said that in the Quran. In al munafiqina yukhadi'oon Allah wa huwa khadi'uhum. Wa idha qamu ila salati qamu kusala. Yura'oon al nasa wa la yadhkuroon Allah illa qalila. Muzabzabina bayna haula. Muzabzabina la ila haula wa la ila haula. Says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the munafiqun, you know what a munafiq is everybody? You know what a munafiq is? Right? Is he, is, he, is he a good person? Is he a good Muslim? Is he a good kafir? The munafiq is the worst creature in existence. The most despised creature to Allah. Worse than a kafir. And we're speaking of the munafiq. Nifaq aqida taba not the person who's who harbors faith who I'm sorry who harbors the opposite of faith but speaks like he or she is faithful shows externally that he's a mu'min or Muslim but internally he or she harbors the opposite as the worst kind of creatures Allah says describing some of the characteristics of the munafiqun he said subhanahu wa ta'ala um, of their characteristics إِذَا قَامُوا إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ قَامُوا كُسَالًا they pray when well, we see people we don't know alhamdulillah we don't know munafiq because it's something in the heart but there are attributes of the attributes of the munafiq is they come to salah but they come lazy and bored subhanallah إِذَا قَامُوا إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ قَامُوا كُسَالًا They are bored. They don't come with to salah with, with passion, with enthusiasm, with desire, with happiness, with joy. They come to salah, oof, oh, when is this over? Ya Latif. Bored and lazy. إِذَا قَامُوا إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ قَامُوا كُسَالًا This is Surah An-Nisa. Second, يُرَاءُونَ النَّاسَ يُرَاءُونَ النَّاسَ They like to boast. They like to show off. They like to demonstrate and to perform in front of others. They like that. Especially in matters of worship and religiosity because they're not truly what they are inside. So they want to show that outside that's really what they are. So they love to perform in front of others, especially religious performances. May Allah protect us and forgive us all. And the third characteristic that Allah mentions in this, in this ayah is, and when they are in dhikr of Allah, munafiq is in dhikr of Allah, ya satir. They do that only infrequently. 
وَلَا يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا Their dhikr of Allah is infrequent. That means a mu'min's dhikr of Allah is frequent. Kathira. Kathira. Remember, my dear brothers and sisters, Allah is teaching us what he's teaching us to help us walk in this life in balance. And because humanity and human beings most of the time somehow end up to extremely pursue materialistic worldly desires that we desire as human beings and we do that in such an extreme way that we lose our balance. And Allah Azza wa wants us to restore balance and that to make everything in the envelope of these spiritual um, elements and these spiritual realities that we are in dhikr of Allah Azza wa frequently. As a matter of fact, we should be in dhikr of Allah Azza wa hopefully, as I mentioned before, so that everything we do, everything we say, everything we feel deliberately must be screened by that awareness of Allah Azza wa Family life, school life, work life, Masjid life, masjid activity, whatever, teaching, learning, volunteering, whatever, playing, spending time off, all of that should be in the envelope of this dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal, all the time. One of the salihun uh, in the Sham, in the, I think in the 6th century Hijri, Shaykh Al-Imam Abdullah uh, forgot the, uh, the, the tribal name he was a scholar and, and a strong man also he had, physically he was very strong also and he was being awliya'illah he, he was incredible uh, one of the stories goes like this you know uh, he was walking with one of his companions another student an, an alim um, and they were in those old days in the wild and lo and behold a Christian in the time of the Crusades actually Crusaders time a Christian you know from the population of the area uh, had a mule or a donkey and on both sides of the donkey there was a load both loads contains you know big um, uh, what is it big jars that contain khamr wine and um and then and, and he, and he wanted to cross the river and he needed help to do that without the mule running away and without, you know, uh, destroying the, 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 the merchandise that this person has bought and he had a store, so he was taking it to his store to sell it. And lo and behold, the, uh, Sheikh Abdullah was fascinated by us and he said, could you please, I need help with this. And they saw he was a Christian and he, they saw what happened. So he came and helped him. He came and helped him, you know, cross, help cross the mule with the wine on the, in the in the jars, and he said something, Bismillah, and so on, and, and he said, and he went. And the man arrives to uh, to his store uh, in the town where he was going, and uh, okay, he, he opens the, the merchandise to you know, to put it in bottles, etc. And all the wine turned into vinegar. He says, this is Abdullah, Sheikh Abdullah. <laughs> Indeed, his barakah, the blessing of that wali, as he touched that and he did help him, it turned into khal. This is well-established story. Yarwiha even the likes of Ibn Kathir, fil bidayah wal nihayah, and adhas rahimahullah ta'ala. And he went to him and he told him, you did that. And he smiled. He prayed. And he said, the Christian said, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. Now this man, Shaykh Abdullah, when he died, the way he died, the night, the day before he died, he um, told the Mu'addin of the masjid, who used to be also one who washes the dead people. He said, get ready for tomorrow. You'll have some work to do. Subhanallah. Get ready for tomorrow, you have some work to do. 
and as his, his usual manner he spoke to people he alhamdulillah he, he taught things and so on and he went at night and and he was in the dhikr of Allah Azza wa always in the morning they come they found him sitting in the position he used to sit in and the misbah in his hand and didn't know that he died and he was sitting like that he didn't fall and the misbah was in his hand as he used in the dhikr of Allah Azza wa and that's where he realized after they realized he died and they left him like that they called the Sultan and the Sultan came and saw that this is all in Ibn Kathir and the Sultan saw that and he said leave him like that we'll build something around him for people to see as the karama of Allah to his awliya the ulama say no we can't do that the law doesn't say, you say no we, we bury him but they saw that karama of this wali of Allah جل, who was constantly in dhikr of Allah جل. and that's the way he died as a matter of fact he died under the tree where he used to be always in the of Allah and that's where he was buried Rahimahullah uh, Ta'ala Allah under all circumstances no circumstance is an exception Kafratu Dhikrillah and it's the easiest thing and yet that which most of us don't do not even on average and yet Allah wants to give us but we don't take sometimes. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu dhkuru allaha dhikran kathira. A lot of dhikr, frequent dhikr, not infrequent, not sometimes only. Dhikran kathira. That way we balance our lives. If you ponder your lives or mine, my dear brothers and sisters, you find that we have gone extreme in terms of our pursuit of that which is worldly, legitimately so even. And we have not balanced it with our, the requirements of our soul, the requirements of our hearts. That which also help us be protected in this dunya as we journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah says, Allah dhikran kathira, and he even emphasizes it, but in a different wording, وَسَبِّحُهُ بُكْرَةً وَأَصِيلًا وَسَبِّحُوهُ بُكْرَةً وَتَسْبِيحِ is what is ذِكْرُ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ بُكْرَةً morning and afternoons and evenings some ulama say that's alluding to the morning salah and ظهر عصر المغرب والعشاء as well and some ulama say that and all ذِكْرُ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ تَسْبِيحُ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ and to emphasize ذِكْرُ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ first by saying كَثِيرًا very frequent and second by in different wording, says still be in dhikr. وَسَبِّحُوهُ بُكْرَةً وَأَصِيلًا All the time. Who was busier? Nay, not busier. Who was as busy as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as human being? La ilaha illallah. And yet he was always in dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal. Always. Was he an administrator? Was he or not? Is there any better administrator than he? Was he a manager or not? Was he a general or not? Was he a Nabi or not? Was he a Wali or not? Was he a Qawi or not? He was all of them. Was he a father or not? Was he a teacher or not? Qawi, that's what I said, Qawi. Was he Chief Justice, Supreme Court Justice or not? Ahsant, well said. Was he or not? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And yet, he was always in dhikr of Allah always and yes that's special that's the most beautiful soul in the known and unknown universe is the soul of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as you know he says tanamu aynaya wa la yanamu qalbi my eyes go to sleep but my heart never does his heart is always aware of Allah is always in dhikr of Allah the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has also an inheritance from Rasulullah sallallahu and there will be some ibad of Allah in the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu whose hearts are always in the of Allah as a karama from Allah to this ummah of Muhammad sallallahu and as an ikram as an ennobling 
for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Tanamu aynaya wa la yanamu qalbi. And Allah Azza wa Jal instructs us to be that way. And when we enter Jannah, inshallah, Ya Rabbi, Jalla min ahli Jannah, rest assured, because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us that, that some of us in Jannah would know and realize that others are in higher degrees of Jannah beyond beyond description. And we would wish that we were in that level. And one of the differences why those are there, more frequent dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jalla. They did all what we did, but they had more dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jalla. They end up in greater nearness to Allah Azza wa Jalla. Because of dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal. Who is the best of scholars? If scholars are all of the same category of scholarship and of work and of sincerity and so on. Who is the best of those scholars? The one of them was more in dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal. Hakala. And so on. In every quality, if people are have all those qualities, the one would be better the one who has more of the of Allah Azza wa And that's why also it is said, ذكر الله سبحانه وتعالى منشور الولاية منشور الولاية ذكر of Allah is the royal script or decree for sainthood. If I want, if you, if you say ولاية is sainthood, though it's an okay translation, but it's not good enough for wali. What does that mean? The ulama say, rahimahullah ta'ala, that if a person is given tawfiq from Allah Azza wa to be always in the of Allah Azza wa sincerely, tongue and heart, that person is going towards wilaya. Some of us don't even know what wilaya is. We have no interest in it anymore because we don't know it. And wilaya is the only thing we can aspire for that is less than nubuwa. We cannot aspire for nubuwa. That's out of the question. But the next degree beyond nubuwa, prophethood is what? The wilaya, special wilaya, wilaya al-khassa. In other words, that's the greatest achievement, if I can call it achievement, which is a gift from Allah, that a human being in this world can ever achieve. is to be a wali of Allah Azza wa Jal. And dhikrullahi manshur al-wilaya. Kafratu dhikrillahi, they call it manshur al-wilaya. If you know a person who is like that, constantly, constantly under all circumstances, then there is a likelihood that that person is inshallah chosen by Allah to become a wali. If not, he already or she already is. أذكر الله ذكرا كثيرا وسبحه بكرة وأصيلا. We can go a long time, long while here about the virtues of ذكر and wine. We'll do that some other time. But let me jump to the next thing. And Allah says after that, سبحانه وتعالى. هو الذي يصلي عليكم وملائكته. الله أكبر. هو الذي يصلي عليكم وملائكته. For it is He and His angels. Who do what? Yusallun alaykum. Send salah upon you. Like we send salah upon the Nabi. Allah sends salah upon me? And you? And the angels do? La ilaha illallah. This is beyond our ability to uh, to carry. This is Allah does that? First this. But he says that after he said what? Allah dhikran kafira. As though he's telling you and me, my dear brothers and sisters, look what Allah is doing to you, so be in dhikr of him. Very frequently. For huwa alladhi yusalli alaykum wa malaikatuh. Shouldn't you be in dhikr of him very frequently? Subhanallah, look at this subtle way to put it. Did you understand? Or should I repeat it? Because I feel this is exciting. I'm inside excited. Um, 
I'm not stable inside. I want to jump. Yes, I will. Yes. So when Allah Azza wa Jalla says before that, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu dhukuru Allah dhikran kathira. Oh, you have attained faith. Be in dhikr of Allah very frequently. Right after that, he says, "Who will be your salli alaykum wa malaikatu?" He who, Subhanahu wa Taala, He, He, the Divine, Infinite, Beauty and Majesty and Power, and Knowledge and Will, Infinite, Subhanahu wa Taala. He says, "He sent salah upon you." And his angels, this beautiful Nawrani creatures, Jibreel and Mikael and Israfil and, and the likes, send salah, salah upon you. Shouldn't you be in dhikr of him? La ilaha illallah. The one who does that to you, shouldn't you be in dhikr of him and not just in dhikr? Dhikran kathira. As a matter of fact, in one text, until people say, this is a mad person. حَتَّى يُقَالَ مَجْنُونَ Because they don't know what he's going through. The tongue moving, 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 and the heart is with Allah, and you know, he's somewhere else, and oh, this is a mad person, but he's not mad. They are at a lower dimension. And he's high. He's high spiritually. So he's mad. They say, there's a text that teaches, be in dhikr of Allah so frequently until people, and don't mind, say he's mad. Shouldn't we be in dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jalla with the one who does that to us? Allahu yusalli alayna? Allahu Akbar. Hu alladhi yusalli alaykum wa malaikatuhu liyukhrijakum min al-zulumati ila al-nur. But how does Allah does salah? Upon us. Allah, and you salli, Allah, you salli. Allah, you salli. Allah, you salli. Subhanallah. Of course, every attribute, the words are common four dimensional words that we use. That is because we are in three spatial dimensions and one temporal dimension, and our words are consistent with the dimensions in which we are. So our words are confined to four dimensions and express four dimensional realities. Allah Azza wa is not in four dimensions or in any dimension. Allah is the creator of dimensions. So language is used for us because we are four dimensional creatures. The language we must understand to express sometimes attributes of Allah that are beyond four dimensions. So when Allah says you salli, it's a word that is four dimensional. However, the extent or the scope of it with Allah Azza wa is beyond definition. And with that in mind, the ulama say that a salatu, salah of Allah upon us, is the expression of his merciful love to us. The expression of his rahmah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. As a matter of fact, some of them recount an author from the early Muslims of Bani Israel, that Bani Israel asked Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, and these are in the books of Tafsir by some early ulama of the Salaf. They asked um, Musa alayhi salam, does your Lord, your salli? And Musa was offended by that question. And Allah Azza wa inspires him or reveals to him, tell them, yes, my Lord, your salli. And his salah is his rahmah. His salah is his rahmah. And in one variance, his salah is wa rahmati taghlibu ghababi. Wa rahmati wasi'at kulla shay. This is his salah. My merciful love encompasses everything. My merciful love overrides my anger or my justice. This is the salah of Allah upon us. The expression of his merciful love to us in all aspects of life. Life without his rahmah would be impossible for us. Life without his rahmah expressed at all dimensions is impossible for us. Also the expression of his rahmah, of his salah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, is through athana'u alayna inda al-malakuti wal-mala'il a'la. 
that he subhanahu wa ta'ala, that salah also means that he azza wa jal mentions you, those who do that dhikr, plenty of dhikr, he mentions you in the presence of the most elect of his creatures in the dimensions above. Because when you are in dhikr of him, as the text teaches, he is in dhikr of you in the presence of al-mala'u al-a'la. من ذكر إذا ذكرني في نفسه ذكرته في نفسي وإذا ذكرني في ملأ ذكرته في ملأ خير منه. As the text teaches, so part of his salah upon us is that we are Subhanallah. Your name is mentioned in the presence of the malaika by Allah to His malaika. Look at my abd. Part of the meaning of salah is to draw us nearer to him. You know that journey of the qalb, rushing to Allah with change. He draw us, he, drew, he will draw you nearer, meaning perhaps also your heart will change quicker. From bad to good, from good to better, from better to best. You will run quicker with your heart. The positive changes take place quicker towards nearing Allah Azza wa Jal. That's part of the salah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us and the salah of the angels is to seek forgiveness for us from Allah azza wa jal to intercede on our behalf with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Allah indicates in the Quran as well and in the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the angels do ask Allah to forgive us indeed they intercede on behalf of Allah to forgive us and to bless us and so on that's the salah of the malaika upon us as well with this inshallah at this moment I'm going to stop and whenever we meet the next time we'll continue in this broad subject but very essential subject of the balance in our lives that we must have the balance between the material and rational and the spiritual this quest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which we have been created for that we must never never forget whether my occupation or yours is a blue collar worker, a white collar worker, a man or a woman, sick or healthy, in all time, in all space, we must never forget that that's what we created for. And that gives quality to our lives, beautiful quality to our lives, versus someone who is imbalanced in their lives, and are completely strangulated when it comes to their spiritual requirements and needs. Some of us strangulate our souls by giving them carbon monoxide. You know what I mean? Carbon monoxide, your lungs cannot breathe it. So spiritually, we give us something of a carbon monoxide to our souls. Food and, and things to breathe that is not consistent with their nature. You don't feed a soul money. You don't feel a soul power. You don't feed a soul sex. You don't feed a soul a ruh, a qalb, a food. Ruh needs Allah, needs to connect with Allah to survive, to live. Otherwise, we're strangulating our souls by giving them food that is not consistent with their nature. مجل الظلمة كاشف الغمة وعلى آله الطاهرين الطيبين وأصحابه الميامين والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته Yes, yes, go ahead Let's just give him a few seconds to express One thing as calm as no? No gap. Mm. You know where is no gap? Brother, umma, mother, father, there is no gap. You should keep in mind when you stand in Salah. Allah. No gap means we are one. Ah, that's beautiful. That's a, did you hear that? Yeah, very, very, very beautiful. Other thing is, Prophet Abraham Salam asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Subhana. I want to in my heart, show me how you will 